going on guys welcome back we're here in the garage today's video just going to show you a quick little uh, tuning setup so kind of what I run and uh, the hardware software and everything I use so I just wanted to go through that with you guys maybe give you some uh, tips and tricks help you out get started with this stuff so to start with uh, this is my laptop over here I got this on Amazon around 200 bucks just a simple cheapo laptop nothing fancy it's a uh, a little on the slow side but for the price and what I use it which is basically just for tuning um, this thing works pretty well it's very small light portable um, it's super thin you just kind of pick it up throw it in the uh, the car not have to really worry about it battery life is pretty good and when you do need to charge it it's got a pretty small little charger, not like a big power brick or anything like that. So that's really good. And I'm running the HP tuner software with the MPVI2 interface. And that works pretty good. Just a USB connection there. And then uh, show you guys the setup over here. This is for how I connect my wideband. So I have an AEM uh, wideband sensor. This is the one with an OBD2 pass uh, through port. So you'll see here, it's basically like a uh, an in and out, like a dongle for this. So you would hook up your MPVI2 unit to this, and then this would go into your OBD2 port, and then that will be able to read both the wideband and your ECM in your car, all kind of in uh, one setup. And then I just have a little pigtail here for a cigarette lighter so I could run the power. Um, I have one installed in my car permanently, but this would be for like tuning another vehicle or one that didn't have a permanent designated wideband installed. So just kind of showing you guys a, a setup here for that. Be the same concept if you were to install this permanently in your car. So 12 volt power here, that's gonna be hooked up to the gauge and also power the port and then to power the, uh, the heater circuit for the wideband. So that's this coil wire here, and that just goes to the wideband sensor. Then I have this Innovate, um, basically tailpipe uh, connector here. So this would go into the tailpipe, and then there's a port here and a port there to allow the exhaust gases to flow through and hit the sensor. Um, this I got on Amazon. I think this is around 70 bucks. And the only modification I made to this was adding two nuts here to act as uh, lock nuts or jam nuts to keep this tight. I noticed a lot of the comments, uh, reviews on Amazon for this, that people really criticize this bolt and it's really sloppy. Um, if I didn't have these jam nuts in here, they're already tight, so I can't really do it. But this whole bolt will like wiggle around. You can't really get it tight. So I guess people are having issues where the thing would back loose and this whole thing would rip out, fall out of the tailpipe. So I just put a nut on the bottom, nut on the top, and that way I could just lock it down and keep this thing tight. So that works a lot better for me. And one other thing I'd like to mention with the AEM kit. So I don't know if they have the kit number on here, but I'll leave the description uh, in the description below so you guys can get a link to all this. But this, um, don't buy this on Amazon. There's been issues with uh, people putting these kits together, I guess, themselves and selling them, and they don't use the Bosch sensor so they basically give you the aem gauge but then they give you this cheapo wideband sensor and the things burn out after a couple months so uh i've actually seen this happen three separate times um one on my own car um i've already had to replace it on my corvette um for the one that's permanently installed now granted the thing made it like two or three years but when i changed the sensor it didn't have the bosch uh bosch stamp or the part number on it so it was definitely a knockoff. And then um, my buddy over here, who I share the uh, bay with, this is his car. He also had the same issue where he took his out after a couple months when it died. Same thing, wasn't didn't have the Bosch part number on it. And then another friend I had, we did um, we did an install on. He got his on Amazon. Same thing. So now I basically buy these from either like Summit or Jegs or like a well-known dealer instead of on Amazon because you really don't know where this thing is coming from. So just as a heads up, ensure you get this from a reputable dealer. You can even order just the sensor itself um, from like Summit or Amazon. And I think they run about 110, 120 bucks because I recently had to replace it. And the whole kit I think is about 220. So the sensor is like half the price of the kit right there. 
And so this is basically the uh, hardware software setup I use. Uh, this has been successful with doing, uh, if I do like some remote tunes from somebody, I can just put this in a friend's car or something. We could do the data logs, take some rips in it, send it to the tuner, get some revisions for the car. So this is like a perfect setup for that because it's transferable. It's not designated to one vehicle. So that allows some flexibility, mobility, where you can uh, bounce around with different cars. You already got your standalone power. Every car is going to have that 12 volt uh, lighter adapter. The setups worked uh, pretty well for me. Only thing I uh, really replaced recently is the laptop is uh, pretty new. I had an old Sony Vio I was using. The thing was a brick. The battery uh, was shot. It was like 10, 11 years old. So I just picked this up, a nice super cheap simple laptop nothing fancy but gets the job done for tuning and that's all i really need this thing to do is just run hp tuners i'm not trying to do any type of gaming any graphics so for me i was looking for something lightweight portable very slim and cheap i didn't want to spend you know thousand dollars on a laptop that i'm just going to basically use for tuning and uh, it's pretty reliable haven't had any issues with the couple months i've had it so I'll leave you guys links for everything in the description below. So if you want to uh, get this same setup, you'll have uh, have everything together. Another thing to mention is I've been running this MPVI2 unit since um, I think like spring of 2018 when this came out. So I don't have the Pro Link or the new uh, the new style one. I think that can connect here with a uh, a a source output like for if you want to do your wideband directly so this is the way i've always been running it with this piggyback dongle piece and just what i've had success with i got it set up already in my laptop so i don't have to worry about it but if you wanted to look at like the new mpvi2 i think it's the plus or something with the pro link um, that's another option to externally connect in your wideband or anything else that you want to maybe read for an external sensor um, this is just what i got set up with early on and it's kind of what i like it's what i know it's what i already have set up so for me it doesn't really make sense to change it at this point because everything works for me so guys thanks for checking out this video and uh stay tuned we'll keep the uh the videos coming for you i'll see you on the next one